Well, the initial nearly month-long gathering for the Synod on Synodality has come to a close, and among its proposals, a larger role for lay people. Il Synodo non è terminato oggi. Questa è la prima sessione. The report outlined key proposals discussed during the Assembly's confidential conversations. The text was approved paragraph by paragraph by a vote of 344 Synod delegates. For the first time, those voters included women and other non-bishops. EWTN News Vatican correspondent Colin Flynn has more. Working late into Saturday evening at the Vatican and after a month-long meeting of church leaders, men and women religious and lay people from all over the world, the Synod on Synodality released its highly anticipated Synthesis Report. The report summarized the deliberations over the weeks and incorporated more than 1,150 proposed amendments to the text. The 344 voting members approved all of the proposed paragraphs with the required two-thirds majority. There was a lot covered in the 42-page document, including increased lay involvement in the life of the church, including decision-making. A greater role for women in the church, although on the controversial issue of women deacons, they recommended further study. More accountability of bishops when it comes to finances. New ministries for the laity, such as a ministry to assist married couples and those preparing for marriage. Gatherings of church leaders to make synodality a permanent part of life at every level of the church. Textos de San Basilio. It's important to note that some of the hot-button issues that were talked about so much throughout the month were not addressed directly in the report. There was no use of the term LGBT in the document, but they did express closeness and support for those who experience loneliness as a result of being faithful to the teachings of the Church on sexuality. There was also no mention of blessing same-sex couples. In the press briefing on the final day, Cardinal Mario Grec, the General Secretary of the Synod, expressed his gratitude for how the participants were open to listening and finding consensus. Most of them created spaces so that one could enter their own heart, because there was this mutual listening and sharing. One of the phrases that will remain etched in my heart is when a bishop comes and says, Father Mario, I saw the ice melt. Everybody was happy. Jean-Claude Hollerich, the Synod's Relative General, said that when some of the more amended controversial topics came up for vote, including increasing the role of women in the church, there was not as many voting against it as he would have thought. I think it was clear that some topics would meet greater opposition. I am full of wonder that so many people have voted in favor. Hmm. So uh, that means that the resistance are not so great as people have thought uh, before. No? So I am, yes, I am happy with that result. On Sunday, Pope Francis celebrated Mass in St. Peter's Basilica, where he marked the end of this first session of the synodal process. Today, we do not see the full fruit of this process, but with foresight, we can look at the horizon that opens before us. The Lord will guide us and help us to be a more synodal, and more missionary church, worshiping God and serving the women and men of our time, going out to bring the consoling joy of the gospel to all. Attention now shifts to the next months as the participants in the Synod return home and start preparing for next year's concluding meeting in October. In Rome, Colum Flynn, EWTN Newsnightly.